So you want to learn the trick DNA. And maybe you're already here. Or maybe you're here. Or maybe here. Or maybe you're all the way back here. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to perform the trick DNA with no experience necessary. That means I'm going to take you all the way from just getting your first yo-yo right out of its package, all the way to being able to perform DNA the same way that you see professionals do it on TikTok and YouTube. Now, the thing about DNA is that there's quite a progression that you need to go through in order to learn the trick. And so I am going to cover all of that in this video. But instead of using a different yo-yo for each phase of the process, I've just found one yo-yo that can take you all the way from the beginning to the end so that you won't feel like right when you're starting to make progress, you need to upgrade your yo-yo to try to figure out the next thing. So we're going to use the Sage yo-yo in the starter pack. This is our favorite yo-yo for this whole progression. And as a bonus, I'm actually going to teach you three forms of DNA. One that you can start to do almost right away, one for when you get a little bit better, and then finally the full professional DNA, which is really the trick that you want to learn. So let's get right to it. So this is where we begin. You have your Sage Yo-Yo in its box, and of course we have the starter pack, which includes extra string, because as you yo-yo, strings wear out, so you'll want to have some extra string on hand to replace it. We do have the upgradable bearings so that you can do full-on unresponsive DNA when the time comes. And of course we have thick and thin Yo-Yo Lube, and we will explain uh, what those are for as we go along. So let's start by getting the Yo-Yo out of its package. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but the easiest way to get yo-yos out of the box is to just remove it from the bottom, and that's because that's the way that it's packaged. So you're just kind of reversing the way it's packaged. So you get your yo-yo out of the package, and then you're going to get the string out of the box, just like so. Now the string that comes with the Sage yo-yo is pre-shortened. And so um, regardless of how tall you are, the very first couple of tricks are gonna be a little bit easier to learn on a slightly shorter than normal string, and so that's why the yo-yo comes with that. Now, if we were to take the Sage apart, what we will see is that it does have a ball bearing on the inside, and uh, this is what your thick yo-yo lube is for, is for this slimmer yo-yo bearing. If you were to compare it to the other bearing, you can see the one that comes in the yo-yo is slim, and this one is wider. And so the slimmer bearing, uh, if you want your yo-yo to play just a little bit more snappy than the way it was playing before, then it's a good idea to use thick yo-yo lube on it. And so you can just take that out. Um, you probably won't need to do this when the yo-yo is brand new, but I'll still show you. So you just uh, put a tiny drop of lube right into the bearing. You can put one, two, three drops. Um, usually one or two drops is, is more than enough and then you can just put the yo-yo right back together and you will be ready to go. Now, once the yo-yo is together, of course you want to put the string onto the yo-yo. So, uh, let's get this out. Now, yo-yo string is like any other string in that it has two ends to it. So this end with the loop on it, that is for your finger, so we're not gonna look at that for the moment. This end is for the yo-yo, but you don't tie it onto the yo-yo because then it won't sleep right. So what you do instead is you pinch right at the top, and then you're going to pinch just a little bit below that, and you are going to untwist the string until you see it start to come apart, just like that. When you see that, then you can just grab the string and pull it apart, and then as you untwist it, you put it around your thumb, and I put it on my middle finger, and that way I can open it up. And once it is opened up far enough, you can slide it right onto the top of the yo-yo like this. Now when you release the string, you want to pull away from the yo-yo, and you can see that that centers the string so that it ends up winding back around the yo-yo in a way that's really clean, which is great. So when you wind the yo-yo up for the first time, you can just wind it like this, but because it has a ball bearing in there, it might slip a little bit. So what I would recommend is just put your fingers around the string like this, and then as you move those around the yo-yo, it won't slip, and then once it starts to catch, then you can wind it tightly. Now, once you have the yo-yo wound up, then you can put it on your finger. Now, you might be tempted to put your finger right into this loop, but that loop is going to be too big or maybe too small for your finger. If it's too big, then the yo-yo will slide off as you throw it. So what you do instead is you take the string below this loop, and you're going to pull it right through the loop. So here's the string below it, and you just pull it right through. And when you do that, you can see it makes an adjustable slip knot. And so then you just insert your middle finger right into that slip knot and you pull it tight. And that is how you prepare your yo-yo for action. 
So the first thing that you need to master if you want to learn the trick DNA is you need a very powerful throw. And that means no more just dropping the yo-yo like this. We need to learn a proper throw. And if you want to learn a proper throw, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're holding the yo-yo correctly or else your throw won't work. So the easiest way to tell if you're holding it correctly is to just unwind the yo-yo and hold it in your hand like this. And what you want is for the string to be going from the middle of your middle finger over the top of the yo-yo like this. If the yo-yo is upside down, then the string will be going from the middle of your finger underneath the yo-yo. And if you try to throw with the yo-yo like that, it will be spinning backwards, which will mess up your DNA. And most of the time, the throw won't work at all anyway. And so just make sure that you're holding the yo-yo the right way with the string going over the top. And then you're going to wind it up tightly in your hand so you can hold it. And then the main thing that you want to keep in mind as you're throwing the yo-yo is you are going to be throwing the yo-yo with your palm up. And however you are holding your palm, that is going to control the lean of the yo-yo. So if you release the yo-yo and your palm is a little bit crooked this way, then the yo-yo is going to be sleeping crooked just like this. And then if you have your palm crooked the other way, your yo-yo will also be throwing crooked in the other way. Now this is actually going to become useful a little bit later on, but for now, if you want to perfect your throw, the main thing is you want to make sure when you release the yo-yo, your palm is perfectly flat. And for the most part, that will get you a pretty straight throw, which is what you want. Now, it's not enough to have a straight throw. What you really want is a powerful throw. So let's kind of analyze what we're doing. The first thing that you're going to do, make sure you're holding the yo-yo properly, and then you're going to make a muscle like this. And all you're going to do is extend your hand out, make sure your palm is flat. And when you do that, you'll get a pretty straight throw. Now, if you want a more powerful throw, it actually doesn't come from the wrist like a lot of people talk about. It more comes from your shoulder and from your elbow. So if you want more power, you're going to have to lift your elbow up so that you're getting the power of your shoulder in the throw as well. And then you can see that gets you a much, much more powerful throw. And that's kind of where you begin with the DNA. Now, at this point, it's not a bad idea to work on some other tricks to help you improve your throw. Tricks like Rock the Baby or other picture tricks like the Eiffel Tower. Those will force you to have a longer spin time so that you can learn the trick. But once you're confident in your throw, you're ready to move on to level one DNA, also called UFO or flying saucer. And so what you want to do for this is you are just going to throw a normal throw, but you're going to intentionally throw the yo-yo crooked across your body. And again, the way that you do that is you're going to bend your elbow in so that your palm ends up a little bit crooked in this direction. And that way, when you throw the yo-yo, the yo-yo is going to end up spinning crooked. And that's exactly what you want because you know DNA, the yo-yo is going to be leveled off just like this. Now, in order to perform the UFO, all you're going to do is make sure that you are throwing the yo-yo as hard as you can. Make sure you throw it very crooked. It doesn't have to be perfectly crooked and you'll see why. And again, just get a really good sleeper, throw it so that it's crooked, and then just wait for the yo-yo to level off. And you can see that the yo-yo automatically starts to do a DNA of sorts. Now, it's not on your finger, but again, this is just level one. This is just kind of working our way up to it. So again, you're just going to throw it, let the yo-yo start to DNA, and then when it seems like the spin is done, you pull the yo-yo up so it's level to your hand, and if it still has enough spin power, then it will come back. And so don't do this trick too long. Just give it a little bit of spin time and then pull the yo-yo up and you have mastered kind of level one DNA. Now when you do this, if you are right-handed and you're throwing the yo-yo across your body, if you were to look at your string, you'll see that it's getting looser and looser and looser. And if you were to go like this, you see that it kind of gets into a mess. Now this is going to help us later on, but we're going to have to learn how to deal with that right now. And so what you can do is you can now do a UFO in the opposite direction. And so again, if instead of turning your hand in like this, you're going to turn it out like this with your elbow out and just do the same thing. Throw the yo-yo pretty crooked, let it level itself out, get a little bit of spin, pull it up so it's even with your hand and bring it back. And that is going to tighten the string. So as you're working on this, you might want to alternate between the two and that way the string tension doesn't get too bad. And that'll also give you a good sense of how to look at your string and see if it's too tight or too loose which is definitely going to help you as you move forward to more advanced DNA tricks. Once you have mastered level one DNA, you are ready to move up to level two, where we're actually going to get the yo-yo spinning on our finger. Now there is a more advanced version, but we'll get there in time. So for level two, it's basically exactly the same way that you start off level one. You're going to throw the yo-yo crooked to the inside of your body. And what you're doing is right as the yo-yo begins to level off, 
at the very moment it levels off, really, you want to try to get your finger right into this finger spin area in the sage. And if you get the timing just right and you don't bring your hands together too quickly, then the yo-yo will spin on your finger and you will be performing a level 2 DNA. Now one thing that will make this quite a bit easier is if you don't throw the yo-yo too hard. Now I know that up until this point we've been talking about improving your throw. That's really, really going to help when we get to level 3 and it helped a lot with level 1. But for level 2, it actually is more of a hindrance if your yo-yo is going a little bit too fast. And that's because when you first pick the yo-yo up with your finger, there's a tendency that the yo-yo is going to kind of think that you're pulling it back up and it's going to want to come back even when you don't want it to. Uh, the chances of that happening are a lot less if it's not spinning very quickly. Now another thing that you're going to encounter, which I think you could anticipate, is since you're throwing the yo-yo across your body for the level 2 DNA, every time you do it the string is going to be getting a lot looser if you're right-handed, tighter if you're left-handed. And so you will need to compensate for that by doing a level 1 DNA to the outside to tighten the string back up or loosen it if you're left-handed. And so just make sure that you keep all of those things in balance. Now of course, uh, when I say that this isn't the full DNA, the way that the pros do it on YouTube and TikTok, that's because when they do DNA, they're using an unresponsive yo-yo. That's how they can just pop the yo-yo up and catch it right out of the air as opposed to really gently getting their finger underneath the yo-yo. But of course, if we want to learn how to do that, first we need to get our Sage yo-yo set up for unresponsive play. The first step in setting up your yo-yo, your Sage yo-yo for unresponsive play, is to just take it apart. And then you can remove the slim bearing that was on the inside, set that off to the side. And really all you need to do is put in the wider unresponsive bearing that we talked about before. And once you have put your yo-yo back together, you are ready to go. But um, I did tell you that I wanted to let you know about the thin lube. Um, this allows this bearing to keep playing unresponsive longer. So what I typically do is play with this bearing for a little while and get a sense of how it sounds. And um, that usually takes five, ten minutes. And then I will take my thin lube and I will uh, squeeze the bottle so that just a small amount begins to drip off, but not a full drip so that it doesn't come off on its own. Just get a tiny amount to start to pool and then I touch it to the bearing. And when I do that, you will see it start to pool around the shield. Usually one quarter or one half of the bearing is about what you want, which again is less than a full drop, maybe half, maybe even just a quarter of a drop. And then typically I will take uh, maybe an old string and kind of dab the bearing to get all the excess off. And then you can put the yo-yo back together. Now you also see that I have replacement response pads here. Um, the response pads that come on the Sage are not flush with the side of the yo-yo, but they're raised up just a little bit. Um, you can still learn DNA with the response pads like that, so I'm not going to demonstrate how to change these out. But if you ever want your Sage to only play unresponsive ever again, if you know that you're not going to put it back into responsive mode, then all you need to do is peel these out. They're just like stickers. Peel them out on either side and then get your upgraded uh, kind of thinner response pads and you can put those in and then they will be flush and then um, it'll just be set up for unresponsive play all the time. Again, it'll play unresponsive even with the thick pads. And so we will just put the yo-yo back together and we will be ready to go. So what does it mean now that we've set our yo-yo up for unresponsive play? Well, basically what it means is now when we throw the yo-yo, it's gonna spin a lot longer, but when we try to pull it back up, it won't come back unless we perform a trick called a bind. And so just so that we can get a little bit more comfortable with how the yo-yo plays here, I'm going to need to teach you how to do a basic bind off of a normal throw. And so what you want to do to bind the yo-yo is, again, start with your normal throw just like you typically would. And then to perform the bind, you're going to bring your finger into the string and lift it up. And what you want to do is set the yo-yo right onto about the center of the string and then bring your hands together. Now when you do this the first time, if your hands are not aligned, you'll start to see the yo-yo lean to one side or the other. So it's really important to keep your hands pretty straight so that the strings don't touch the side of the yo-yo. And then what you want to do is pinch the string, the, the tail portion of the string that's going over your opposite hand. And when you pinch it, you're going to raise your yo-yo hand up. And that will cause the string to start to wrap around the axle of the yo-yo, which will cause it to come back up. Now, in order to get this just right, you definitely want to be bringing the string into the front half of the yo-yo. If you put the string into the back half of the yo-yo, then it's not going to bind even if you do everything else correctly. So get the string into the front, make sure you're holding the pinch, 
And the key is to just make sure that when you are changing the height of your hands, there's enough distance that you're able to move between your two hands. And what I mean by that is if your yo-yo is already way up here and you attempt to bind, it might not work because that tail is too short. There's not enough string that you can feed into the yo-yo. So for the most part, for most yo-yos, starting with your hands about even or definitely if your yo-yo hand is closer to the yo-yo when you pinch, and then again, you just change the height of your hands, which will feed the string into the yo-yo, and that will execute the bind. Now, if you want your bind to be a little bit more clean, another thing that you can do is as you get the timing just right and you see the yo, you kind of know when the yo-yo is going to bind, you drop this hand under the front of the yo-yo and that will toss the string outside the gap so that it will wind up clean and you don't get part of that tail inside the yo-yo. Now the bind is another one of those tricks where you don't need the yo-yo spinning super fast in order to practice it and you'll want to get that down so that you can start working on the rest of the trick. Now, the next thing that you want to learn how to do, and this is probably the toughest part of this entire trick, is you need to learn how to finger spin. Now, finger spinning is just where you pop the yo-yo up in the air and you catch it out of the air just like this. And then uh, the next hardest part of this trick is not just the finger spin, but it's getting the yo-yo back from your finger spin. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. We do have a whole video on finger spins that you can learn how to finger spin with any yo-yo. The one nice thing about the Sage is that it's set up for finger spins by having this uh, area right here for your finger. That's going to make it at least a little bit, probably a lot easier to learn. Now the finger spin for DNA is not thrown across your body the way it is for level two. For level three, you actually want to throw it to the outside. And that has to do with the way that binds are performed and, and we'll get there. So when you are learning how to finger spin, ultimately you want to get to the point where you can just pop the yo-yo right up and catch it right out of the air. But it's better to approach it in kind of an incremental fashion. And so when you're first learning how to do a finger spin, part of what you're figuring out is just how do you get the yo-yo to balance on your fingers so that it feels comfortable? How do you get it so that um, it stays on your finger? Things like that. So the easiest thing that you can do is similar to what you did with level two, is throw the yo-yo where you want it to the outside and then just pick the yo-yo right up with your finger and try to get your finger into that center area. Now, in some sense, this is gonna be easier than it was in level two, because in level two, if you go up too quickly, the yo-yo is going to come back on you. But since this is an unresponsive yo-yo, that's not gonna happen. And so what you really wanna do is just close the distance between your two hands once you get your finger in place, and you can see that the yo-yo will kind of naturally start to spin on your finger just like that. Now you see, it didn't go perfectly well because there's a few things that you kind of need to manage while you're doing your finger spins. Uh, the first one is that when the yo-yo is finger spinning, see how this hand, my yo-yo uh, my hand is way up in the air? That's because I'm trying to keep the string from touching the bottom of the yo-yo. If you let the string touch the bottom of the yo-yo, see how it spun around and it kind of wrapped around my finger and it ruined the finger spin? Well, that's one of those things that you are going to have to contend with as you're doing this trick. And so when you're first just learning how to pick the yo-yo up, you want to bring your hands together just a little bit, but not too much so that it doesn't touch the bottom of the yo-yo. Now, the next thing that you want to do once you have kind of gotten comfortable with just picking the yo-yo up right out of the air, eventually you do want to get it so that you can just pull the yo-yo up and catch it right out of the air the way the pros do. And so instead of just going right from lifting it up to tossing it way up in the air, you should do it in a way that's really incremental. And so what I would recommend is just pop it up just a little bit. I mean, that almost seemed like I didn't do anything at all, but it's a little bit better than what I did before. And then from there, you can just pop it up a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more, and the better you get, you'll find that eventually you're just mastering the catch where you can pull the yo-yo up from anywhere and catch it and it will stay on your finger. Now, once you are consistently landing the yo-yo into a finger spin, the next thing you need to do is just learn how to bring the yo-yo back. And this whipping motion of getting the string into the gap so the yo-yo comes back, that might be just as hard as learning how to finger spin. And so be really patient with yourself as you work on this trick. And I'm gonna give you as many tips as you can to master this because this is absolutely crucial for landing your DNA. So again, first thing you wanna do is just get the yo-yo up into a finger spin. 
And uh, I use the word whip because that's the word yo-yoers typically use for this particular motion. But don't think about it like a whip. You know, a whip is usually like a really short halting motion like that. Really what we're doing is we're more swinging the string. Uh, and I want you to think about how slow that motion is. It might not look super slow when I'm doing it, but it's definitely not a whip. It's a very gradual, even motion where I come really close to the yo-yo, come back towards myself, and pull my hand back. It's kind of like a C shape. You definitely want to make sure that you get your hand very close to the yo-yo as you're swinging the string into the groove because you want as much string as possible to fold around the outside of the yo-yo because that is what is going to help you execute your bind. Now, when you first start working on this, even if your technique is really good, uh, one thing that will probably happen is the string will often go underneath the yo-yo. And um, if that happens, that's probably because you're aiming directly for the groove, but gravity is pulling the string down. And so what you want to do instead is you want to aim just a little bit above the yo-yo as you're swinging the string. Gravity will pull it down into the groove, and then that will execute the bind. And um, the next thing is, you know, just put it all together. Make sure that you are not stopping the motion. Make sure that you are getting your hand very close to the yo-yo and then pull your hand away. You might even accelerate just a little bit as you pull your hand away from the yo-yo. But not much. It's a, it's a pretty even motion the whole time. And eventually you'll start to see the yo-yo more consistently coming back to your hand. Now, once you are able to execute the bind, you are ready for DNA. I mean, you are right there. Going from the bind to DNA is actually not too difficult, thankfully. And so what you want to do to get into your DNA is you're going to swing the string into the groove of the yo-yo just like before, but instead of bringing your hand back to yourself, you're going to pause right after your hand passes by the yo-yo and then lift your hand right above the yo-yo. And you can see that immediately goes into DNA. Now when I say pause, I mean really, really briefly. You just kind of hesitate and then move your hand up. And that hesitation is important because you're giving the string time to bend around the yo-yo so that there's enough string in the groove so that when you pull straight up, it has what it needs in order to execute the bind and actually perform DNA. Now, when you bring your hand above the yo-yo, you want it directly above the yo-yo. You don't want to pull it up too high or else the, there won't be cut quite enough slack in the string for DNA to happen. Um, you want the yo-yo to be spinning quickly, but not necessarily too quickly. Um, the reason we've been talking about having a really powerful throw is so that the, sp the spin is going to die a little bit when it gets on your finger. But again, once you're kind of better at executing the bind and you don't need a lot of time to kind of settle the yo-yo, then you don't actually want the fastest spinning yo-yo that you can throw when you do DNA. You want it kind of at about medium speed. And so if you threw it too hard, sometimes I'll even just tap the side of the yo-yo with my finger to slow it down. Now one thing that you'll notice a lot of people who do repeated DNAs and videos, uh, they will start to do this motion. What they're doing is they are loosening the string. If they're right-handed, they're tightening it if they're left-handed. And that's because DNA just adds all kinds of tension to your tricks. And so you are definitely going to want to learn a fast way to get the string tension out. And I'll teach you a real quick version of this right now. Um, not going to go into detail because we've already learned DNA, but it's good to know. So set up your first bind like you already did. And instead of just pinching and lifting your hands, what you want to do is you're going to swing the yo-yo to the outside. And as you swing it to the outside, once it's as far out as it's going to go, you are then going to swing this hand in toward yourself and face your palm toward the yo-yo, just like that. And if you are able to execute the bind when you do that, you'll see that the yo-yo will do kind of a sideways DNA. You could almost call this a DNA 2.5 or something like that. But what that does is it's going to compensate for all the string tension that gets built up from the DNA, and that way you can practice it again. Again, we have other videos about dealing with unresponsive string tension that go into that in a lot more detail. But once you have mastered all the techniques in this video, you will want to check out our video on the finger spin curl so you can add a little extra flair to your DNA. And definitely download our free app for Apple, Android, and Amazon devices where you can learn over 300 more tricks with tutorials just like this.